Hey guys, what's up? I'm with the... Am I talking very soft? <laughs> hey guys, what's up? I'm with the Vaza 3 lip bag! That's right, the sexy, sexy, sexy hatch that some people love and some people hate. Uh, I... I don't know, I asked me to choose between this and the sedan, I'm... 50-50, I really like the sedan because it looks like the 159 Alfa Romeo but this has its uniqueness right there as well. Now, uh, the one that I have is the highest variant which is the High Plus and that's called the lift bag, not a hash bag. Very, very beautiful. Amongst all its other competitors, design-wise, I give this if I could put two thumbs, I would, but my other thumb is here, so two thumbs, okay? Very beautiful. This is so red, so so red, color of our soul, so beautiful. <sighs> Nothing like the soul red lah, huh? Okay, so when you look at it from the front, there's not much going on, guys. It's very simple, which I absolutely love. There's so much more, so much less. I mean, look at the lines that are here. I'm not sure whether you can see it through the camera, but it's all just angles that I'm moving left and right. There's actually not much lines here. There's just one line that goes through the bonnet, and that, that's about it, guys. It's so beautiful. I love how they use the colors to play with all the angles, and I love the headlights. It looks fierce enough. The car looks like it's ready to go for a very spirited drive. Um, beautiful grille. I think this isn't too big. I think it's proportionate. The whole front looks very proportionate. Very nicely designed. Now let's go to the side. Check out those rims. These are 18 inch. But I think the rims are very beautiful. It kind of gives me a little bit of the banana-ish rims feel just a little bit but i do love how these rims are um, kind of like multi dual spoke rims going on i think it's very beautiful again the side if it appears to have lines it actually doesn't have any lines at all it's just the colors playing with you and this now this is so unique you don't see this on many other cars around this whole thing it's i think it's a love or hate thing some people actually love it some people hate it so it's really up to you for me i think it's very unique i love that they do this i love when car makers go out of the way do something totally different and something that comes out like this i think it's beautiful because from far you see it and you think wow and it, this really looks like a hunchback but in all that I really think it's beautiful. I mean, look at how the curves are. It also can look very ugly, lah, really. It's really up to you to decipher, but I think it's very unique. Now, I'm not sure if they call this a spoiler here or not. Um, some people say it looks a bit botak, which I get why, because this is all very rounded. But again, they play with angles, and uh, the back is just very beautiful. I love the lights. I mean, look at this four point inside the lights. I think it's very beautiful and uh, they don't have to use so much because a lot of them or a lot of car makers now, they play with so many lines which are just overwhelming but this is so simple, so elegant and look at the stance. I love how this, I'm loving this car a lot. I mean, just look at the times. I said love. Check out how it slopes down at the side profile. It just slopes down nicely. It doesn't even go like this and protrude out. It just slopes down very nicely. Now, let's open the boot. Is it? Nope, not powered. Is it powered? No, it's not powered. So you have to push it up. And uh, that's, a, that's quite a huge dip here. I get into boot, so I know how difficult this one would be to get into and it's dirty so do not touch like so yes I am in the boot this is me in the boot yeah this 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 the boot lah huh okay getting out now 
Okay, now what's in the boot? It has a spare tire and uh, tools to jack your car up to change your tire if required. Um, yeah, it has a light here so at night you can see what you're getting out. You have hooks here. What's this for? I think. Oh. What is this supposed to be? Is, it, is this supposed to be a hook? Where are the hooks? There should be hooks, shouldn't there be? Okay, so this, you only have a button right here and uh, you just pull it down, like that. It's very interesting eh, why do you have a button that you can lock the car with but not a powered tailgate? So I've just locked... What does this do? It just locks the car, that's it. I see. So sometimes you're getting stuff from the boot and you're like, okay, I'm done. You lock it and then you close it. Why can't you just put two in one where you lock and you close? No? Okay. It's a dual exhaust pipe down there. Of course, you have your fog lights as well. And uh, yeah, that's about it for the walk around. Now, this is very interesting. Check it out. I have my keyless key fob here. And uh, if you notice here, the groove is actually very small. It took me a while to find this groove. To unlock, that's how I unlock. Unlock, let's do the walk away. See whether it auto locks or not. How will I know? Because there's also folding mirrors. And guys, it looks like it doesn't even lock when I walk away. I'm actually pretty far. No, why? I remember the CX-5 having it. What's up with this? So I guess it doesn't. So to lock? Yep. Sorry. This keyless entry only applicable for front passenger and driver. I'm on the inside guys. And I must tell you when I first got inside and I first drove it around without having an active mind or an active thought that this is the Mazda 3 I kept using the left side as the indicator so I kept going like this to turn left and right and I was like why am I doing this and then I kept telling myself this is a Mazda 3 but there you go sitting inside the car it really does feel so continental so premium that even me subconsciously I'm just using the left side for the indicator indicators and it really got to me it really it left a strong impression like wow Mazda really implanted this in me when I get into the car I don't even realize that it's a Mazda and I automatically just think that it's a Conti car and good job I think that's good job Mazda I really never thought I would be so subconsciously eaten into this type of mind games i'm joking but yeah you know what i mean so yes um the inside looks exactly the same as the sedan so very simple their philosophy is less is more and you can see it here where there's really nothing much going on here um the instrument cluster it seems like there's enough information here for the driver and um, you don't need so much going on. You can, can you change the things that are here? Yeah, you just press the info button and it changes <clears throat> right here. Yeah, you have everything right here. You have your speedometer, tachometer, your fuel gauge, everything is here. Um, at the side here, you have your eye stop, traction control, parking sensors, sensors all around. The icon here does go off and on you can see there we go um yeah so your memory seat and uh, a place to put coins that's cute people usually put smart tech here but you know masa drivers are <laughs> a different type of jinba type people just joking okay so what always impresses me when i get into the car is how i feel so i feel like i'm being eaten into the seat whereby i just flush into it very comfortable very nice and the steering wheel is thinner than most steering wheels. It really feels very Porsche like I must say. All the buttons of course build quality very nice very good even the buttons it doesn't feel plastic at all the travel is good Say a command. and 
it has voice command. Aircon, 26 degrees. That's very hot. Sorry, could you repeat that? Dal, Lenny the Pokemon Miata. Sorry, I didn't understand your request. Say, help for additional assistance. Aircon. Sorry, I couldn't understand your request. Voice recognition will end. So it just tells me like, screw you, I can't understand you and I'm not going to talk to you. That's nice. Rejected all my life. Okay, so inside, I've spoken about this in the CX-5 Turbo whereby the more masters I've taken, um, the wow factor is becoming less and less because I go inside and it's all just very monotonous. It's all black. Yes, it's very elegant, but in a way, I would appreciate if it had a little bit more colour, just a little bit. Now, for the MX-5 and the the one that a lot of you are eyeing, a lot of you like, the red, the so red, flows into the cabin area where here is also so red. So, I get that that is because it's a top down, but if this one has it, I think it will look quite unique and also a love-hate thing with a lot of people. But this one really has nothing. I mean, if the stitches were even so red, that would be so beautiful. Or even just red, I think that would be very, very nice. But, you know, that's just my opinion. Other than that, this I, I love how all this is face to the driver. Like, I have my own air cons right here. And um, I feel very special in the car. Um, this is also angled to me. The passenger has his or her own thing going on right there. You have your aircon is enough lah, huh? Okay, a lot of people were complaining about the Corolla's infotainment system, right? About how it looked. I just noticed that the Mazdas are actually doing something similar because look at this. This is the bezel at the side. It actually looks pretty huge. And uh, it's not something that you would notice immediately but after a while you're like actually the screen isn't that big as well yeah moving on the center console now I, I i've mentioned in the corolla whereby if i go forward the seats don't rub against the center console and this is the exact same thing which very good i love that i hate the rubbing sound that chairs give to the center console because they are trying to maximize the space here and here this is soft very nice <clears throat> again they're maximizing everything that is here so you have your compartments here you open this oh, look at that compartments here two cup holders as well and it's just very simple not too many things going on your armrest here oh i love this armrest soft touch so nice so huge passenger and driver can share it i think it's very nice and uh, yeah you can access your center compartment here as well through this if not you can just close it like that i think that's very nice also a usb port here a 12 volt socket here and see um sd card reader right there and yeah this is a divisor similar very similar to the sedan's one if not the same so you have another usb port here as well and this whole area is just for aircon like dual zone air conditioning so i feel very snug and i feel like if you're a bigger person it actually wouldn't feel as nice as it would because even look at my um my 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 headroom and uh, my leg room of course i can always go back but just sitting in here it feels very snug i love the feeling of sitting in here really and the nvh in this car is amazing it's definitely the best among all other competitors that you're looking at you have a sunroof here as well so can't drop the top then slide the top is it can i let go oh so i can let go so i just press the button it opens and when i close yes oh, and it's open nope is it open a bit nope and this one i have to just manually close that's very normal you have your sunglasses compartment there as well and a few buttons here your lights Ooh. and uh, what is this 
someone tell me this i really i'm always so blur with things that they have right here okay your visors here once you open light comes on you close the light goes off if i open it here the light doesn't come on so it's at an angle where only the light comes on hi um opening this does this extend it doesn't does it cover fully it doesn't just i would like to touch a little bit about the cabin area as well rotary knobs i think that's very nice continuity of the design as well as you can see it goes up and of course the side goes in there as well and you have a lot of this layering which mazda uses i guess because they chose the layering then they chose not to have the colors pop out as much yeah okay so let's go to the back now now going to the back uh, very similar to the front look at the front and then look at the back very similar the chairs are quite upright as you can see my headroom now i usually never complain about headroom but because it's a sloping roof line i do feel a little bit claustrophobic and uh, it feels very dark because this whole interior is black as well so i do feel like whoa this is actually very small and i finally know what it feels like to be tall because it's a sloping roof line and because of the design you will see there's a lot of black right here which sometimes isn't really pleasing to the eyes because it's just a this huge thing right here now what bobby mentioned before is if they made this a cushion it'd be so nice because i can just sleep here and your back passengers would appreciate this much more it's very simple just put a cushion here which i completely agree but right now what they did is just soft touch plastic they're just soft plastic and that's about it so the inside might not be to my liking but there always is a reason for how they do these kind of things uh -huh. i'll get to that a little bit later so can i access the boot yes i can how low can it go it goes flat guys can you see flat now does it have no, it's just two cup holders. Guys, what happened to the USB ports behind? Come on. I love when you guys gave USB ports behind. I used to be like, wow, Master's the best. They have USB ports behind. I think that's brilliant. And then the new Master 3 came out and there's no USB ports behind. Why? It's okay. <sighs> Forgiven, I guess. Um, of course, you have air conditioning behind. You cannot uh, toy with the temperature. You can just decide to keep it on or turn it off. You have isofix mounts as well. Now, when I was talking about the design just now, at the price that it's going, um, the lowest is about 140 and the highest spec is about 160. Now, a lot of people make noise. Why so expensive for such a car? Based on the pricing, and if you look at the competitors, when people look at the competitors like the Civic, the Altis, a lot of people talk about the practicality, how big is the boot, um, how's the handling like? They don't really mind as much as how many people it can carry, how spacious it is, <clears throat> what are the features that it has. And when you look at the Mazda 3, you can tell the market is foregoing a lot of this. I mean, the people that are eyeing on the Mazda 3 because design overcomes all that. Because when you are seated in a Mazda 3, it really gives you a very different feeling as compared to all the other cars. I mean, just look at the design, just look at how it drives. And I think that's their main point for the Masa Tree and the type of market that it targets because I don't think you can compare it with the Civic and the Corolla anymore. I just feel like it's a kind it's in the similar segment but at a different level because of the looks, because of the feeling that it gives you. I think that is a thing that they're emphasizing on how the driver feels not so much of the practicality of the car anymore so yeah that's my take on the Mazda 3 liftback let me know what you think guys bye